Hey everyone, it's good old buddy Tony Schiavone. You know, we've had so much fun bringing you What Happened When each and every week. And this could not be done without your love, your support, your love of wrestling, and your constant feedback. It means the world to me, to my buddy Conrad Thompson, to Lois, and the entire staff at WHW. Heck, it means everything to the family. And I want to let you know that we are here for you in so many ways that you don't even realize. And that's why we've come up with SaveCade.com. The very best way for you to save on your mortgage, reduce your monthly payments, get out of debt faster, and even put money back in your pocket. It's simple and easy. Just go to our website at SaveCade.com, fill out the form. There's no obligation, and you may not even need an appraisal. Start saving immediately with SaveCade.com and the great people at First Family Mortgage. Lower your monthly payments. Possibly skip your next two house payments. Thanks again from all of us at WHW. Today, right today, log on to SaveCade.com and put your butt in a seat that will help save you money. MNLS number 65084, Equal Housing Lender. Conrad Thompson, and you're listening to What Happened When? Monday on the MLW Radio Network, and of course, the Master of Ceremonies back at the Conradison two weeks in a row. Tony Schiavone, to what do I owe this great honor? Well, I have nowhere else to go. Well, this is throwing <laughs> you out. Throw out of my house. Just me and my dog. Hey, how's Francine doing? Man, she's great, and she's looking forward to being on our show oh. very, very soon. She couldn't make it this week, but maybe next week, maybe the week after. I've got an extreme surprise for you, kind yeah. sir. Are you well, ready for this? I don't know if I am or not. I, you know, there were there were there were the Nitro girls, and there were there was there was Terry Boatwright, and there was Medusa, and uh, but there was something about Francine. I I can't put my finger on it but you'd like to <laughs> that's not what i'm saying they're just it's, it's a figure of speech i i just can't i don't know just something about her i really like but anyway how you doing i'm great man <laughs> and we're excited to be covering wcw saturday night francine is not on this oh, but well. medusa is wow okay well we got something going for us so here. we got that going okay. for us and uh, we're excited to be covering this because this is the very first time we've covered wcw saturday night of course we've referenced it in older episodes and i really felt like crockett was gonna win because we left it up to the fans do you want us to cover an old jim crockett promotion show or do you want wcw saturday night and surprisingly maybe not so much to me the fans chose WCW Saturday Night, and I feel like some of our most devout listeners, they really wanted Crockett. Well, the old Crockett stuff, and when I say old Crockett stuff, I mean circa 1985, April of 1985 when I first started, was to me the legendary, wonderful, romantic stuff of when Dusty used to come out and Flair used to come out and Tully and the Horsemen would come out and, and just go on and on and on and promos and Cornette, Rock and Roll Express, Magnum TA. And that's when it was just world championship wrestling, stars of the NWA. Later, it became WCW Saturday Night. 
and what we're going to do here is look at one where it became WCW Saturday, when it was WCW Saturday night. And we're also, if I'm right, going to look at one to where Kip Fry put his hand stamp on WCW Saturday night and almost completely fucked it up. Shivani here, and I'm going to interrupt these two slapdicks to thank everyone who listens to WHW each week. And thanks to all of you who have bought a t-shirt at LoisRules.com. Remember, with every shirt purchased, Tony will eventually call you to thank you for the purchase. So make sure when you see no caller ID, pick up. Could be one of those dumbass robocalls, but it could also be him. He will call, we promise. He's very busy during the summer and he's old. So he will get around to you, eventually. Lots of shirts to choose from at LoisRules.com. My favorite, the Lois Rules shirt. Or you may want to get the low-key big hog, which I know firsthand has nothing to do with Tony. Or the Bill's Glass Bottom Boat Tours, which is sick, sick. Plus, suckers got to know. Damn, I'm good. And that one's mine. And hashtag NFLTG. Damn, I'm good. Also, there is the new popular Slapdick Nation and the ever popular Tommy Young. Uh, That's, you say it like this, Tommy Young. I'll let you handle that. Remember, all t-shirts from LoisRules.com are part of the Pro Wrestling Tees. And we thank you for making our store one of the most popular out there. So, log on to LoisRules.com this week and be part of the fun. And now back to more juvenile humor with Slapdick 1 and Slapdick 2. And I understand Cassio Kid is there as well. Whatever Judy saw in him, I'll never know. Well, let's have you tune in right now on the WWE Network. Last week, we had great friend of the show, Cassio Kid. Go ahead and give us the countdown to three. Mm-hmm. And he did it in Espanol. Mm-hmm. Uh, Cassio was back with us again this week. Is there a fun way you'd like to see him count down to three this week, Tony? Yeah, in Arabic. Can you, can you do an Arabic? Arabic? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Right, so we're we going one, two, three in Arabic? All right, here we go. La! 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 Play. And hopefully you're watching May 9th, 1992. I'm not sure what the fuck's going on. But here's Sting and Eric Bischoff. Eric Bischoff looks like a Ken doll who's here to sell his term life insurance. He's got the double-breasted tattoo. Sting looks like a Top Gun extra here with the Oakley shades and a windsuit. How would you describe Sting's look here? Look at that. Yeah, he is right off the he is right off the Top Gun set. So I, I don't know what they're talking about here, but he's probably telling Eric, he's Eric, I don't know about you, but someone needs to take over this fucking company because we are getting ready to see one shit show. And here's the open here. Of course, Nikita Koloff recently back in the company. Right. Got clips of him. And what do you know? There's Brian Pillman. And Man. This- this Ahead is, of the time. Yeah, the, yeah, bullshit. This is the opens that they used to do on World Class Championship Wrestling back in the uh, 70s. And now we bring it, bring it into uh, WCW Saturday Night. A couple of uh, things about this. Uh, Kip Fry told me, he said, I just need some way, somehow, to make this show more entertaining. And I remember thinking, oh, my God. Look at Missy Hyatt right there, boy. Oof. So what, how would you describe Missy Hyatt's hair? Uh, it's all aquanetted back. Does so she stick a finger in an electrical socket? Mm-hmm. And here's Jr. Take it over. <laughs> okay, uh, Jr. You say, hmm. I would rather this be WCW Saturday Night with Jim Ross. And you remember how they used to uh, Walter Cronkite, CBS Evening News with Walter Cronkite, or ABC Evening News with Peter Jennings. Jr. Said, I want my name to be written in with Jim Ross. And I used to say, Go for it, buddy. But Kip Fry was was never good with that. We were trying to get the rub, get the cross rub from other people and other entertainment. The mainstream. The mainstream. Uh, And this was Kip Fry's. And I'm telling you, the people that came to the show, came to center stage to watch this, fucking shit on it. They, Here comes Randy Owen, the yeah. lead singer from Alabama. Of course, he looks like my dad if my dad had the Atkins diet. Uh-huh. <laughs> right. And, and here, my dad. 
Hey, go ahead. Do you want to be Jr. or Randy Owen here? I'll take the other one. Uh, I'll, I'll do Randy Owen. Okay. Her. All right. We got old Randy Owen here, late singer of Alabama. Of course, you should have been the late singer of Oklahoma, but you're here from Fort Payne, Alabama. Now, of course, up in Fort Payne, they ain't doing nothing but making socks. Ain't that right, Randy? That and playing softball. <laughs> That's all we fucking do. Anyhow. <laughs> Well, hang on, folks, now. Before we get talking about softball, because Sid ain't even here, you hear me? We're going to talk about some WCW wrestling. That fine wrestling that you can't find in Fort Payne. Let's go to Barry Windham. I've been to Boaz, Alabama. <laughs> and my dad, Black Jack Mulligan, big fat motherfucker. But here I am now once again with these shades on, and I'm telling you this is the only thing saving this show. And I'm going to go be a big star one day. Big star. Fuck this promotion. Fuck Kip Fry. Fuck Eric Bischoff. I'm going to be a big star. And I'm going to come up later on in this show. Am I finished talking yet? Because I said so. All right, hang on now, folks. Before he starts stomping a mud hole in you, we got Randy Owen here. And Randy, we're not exactly sure why you're here, but we're just looking for anything for ratings. I got this double-breasted tattoo or this double-breasted suit. I need a tattoo. You look like tattoo from old Treasure Island. Now, when you saw me walk up to your house, did you think I was here to sell term life insurance? Well, I really thought we would be able to go down to Boaz to the outlet malls and uh, eat some barbecue and uh, also play a game of softball. But, you know, I don't give a fuck about that. The only thing I know is that my favorite place to settle in and hang out during lunchtime is First Family Mortgage in Huntsville. And I make the drive up from Fort Payne all the time. Well, let me just tell you right now, if, if you're going to play in Texas, you got to have a fiddle in the band. <laughs> Did you know that, Randy? you got to have a fiddle in the band. Now, speaking of things you got to have in the band, that's some of my delicious barbecue sauce at jrsbarbecue.com. Now, don't try to spell that out because i got a fucked up spelling because somebody's cyber squatting me. Just Google me. <laughs> JR's Barbecue Sauce. Yeah. We're happy. All right, folks, we're back. I don't know exactly what's going on. We're in director's chairs, and we've got the lead singer from Alabama. You may have heard Sweet Home Alabama. That's your only goddamn song, right, Randy? Well, uh, there's a, another one about Dixie. What, what was that name? Uh, Dix, Dixie Land Delight was that name. I, I haven't had my prevagen, so I can't remember right now. But here we are sitting in the wrestling ring, and I'd just like to say that I really appreciate being on the show. Uh, I've been watching TBS since I was about 14. Well, that's great, man. I tell you what, back when I was 14, the old Cowboy was booking the territory, and he had them hanging from the rafters. Let me just tell you now. And if Cowboy was here now, we'd have Michael P.S. Hayes strutting his big old ass around, and we'd have JYD on top, but we don't. Instead, here's the Z-Man. Wow. So here we go. We got the Z-Man mm. against... Uh, uh, that I mean, looks... How, looks, would, how would you describe this guy? This looks like uh, he could be Ca Casio Kid's cousin. Well, no, it's <laughs> much too thin to be related to Casio Kid. And uh, this is Bob something or another from Florida. Bob something or another. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, coming to the ring from something or another in Florida, Bob. <laughs> What was his name? It was a guy from Florida. What the fuck was his name? I can't remember his Here, name. Here's my thing. Before old Bob something or other uh -huh. came out, yeah. do you reckon that there were mirrors in the locker room? Do you think he looked at himself and said, yep, I'm ready? <laughs> Listen, yes. I'm a big old fat guy, so I can say this. But yeah. you know what I don't do? I wear non-big old fat guy clothes. Mm. If you have a picture of me floating around, I'm probably wearing appropriate big old fat guy clothes. Uh, well, I'm just actually turning my attention to Tom Zink here. And I'm trying to I'm trying to figure out where this arena is where we're having this this. So match. are the fans because there's empty seats in the front row. <laughs> the fans are lost and trying to figure it out. I feel like it's worth mentioning. This is about a month after WrestleMania eight. What was the general morale at this time in WCW? It was terrible, absolutely terrible. Now Jim Hurd had been given the uh, given the boot. Uh, Kip Fry, who was a lawyer in the office of uh, Turner Broadcasting, had been given the. Uh, and given the uh, the director's chair, so to speak, and he didn't like I, he. I, I look, I like Kip a lot, but he didn't. He did not like wrestling, and it was pretty apparent. And the fact is, again, that you know we would do all these pitches, and then we would wrestle afterwards. You know, fans shit on it a big time, and we started losing people come into center stage. They didn't want to come there anymore. Let's talk about this. You, you referenced earlier um, Sting. He didn't know why he was doing the interview. Mm -hmm. He suffered a crack rib and a blue uh, a bruised sternum on April 12th at the Omni against Big Van Vader. Mm -hmm. And he wouldn't return until after Wrestle War. And that's what you guys are trying to build towards. Of course, this aired on May 9th. But May 17th will be Wrestle War on May 17th. Um, 
chat me up. Hmm. What do you remember about Sting and his injury on April 12th against Big Van Vader, both a cracked rib and a bruised sternum? Well, what I remember about it was there was concern. You know, we've talked about Vader being legit big man. Hmm. There was a concern that Vader was hurting too many people and Sting being one of them. And when he does what he does and he cracks a, a sternum or, and I think this is actually, I think this is Jacksonville, Florida, where this is, uh, there's a concern that Vader is a little bit too stiff. Let me ask you this. Do you think Bob something or other here is actually wearing football pants with no pads in them? <laughs> actually, I think he's wearing Wahoo McDaniel singlet and then uh, some sort of gym pants underneath. How would you describe his boots? It feels like he's got like Adidas with a boot cover. Yeah, that's what it is. That could that could have been. Those are Wahoo McDaniel's boots without the tassels, too, is what that is. It's worth me. It's worth mentioning that great. What did you say? Indian boots. Oh, my God. Engine. E-N-G-I-N-E. It's what I put in my car to run. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> great Muda was starting in early May for okay. tag matches where he was going to team with uh, Sting against Rude and Vader. Um, or at least that's what was written in the Observer. And I don't think anything like that ever wound up happening. Do you remember Muda? There being talks of him coming in to sort of team up with Sting against Rude and Vader here in this yeah, era? Yeah, there was talks about that, about Muda coming in and he and Sting teaming together, but it never really transpired. Lots of other injuries going around about this same time that kept a lot of other people out of action that uh, I feel like we should bring up. Dustin Rhodes suffered a concussion in April. Mm -hmm. It happened in an auto accident. He wound up missing that show at the Omni we referenced. Uh, was there a serious concern? I mean, what do you remember about Dustin's car wreck here? Well, what I remember was I think we were all were very fortunate that he was still alive after the car wreck. It was that bad. Yeah, it was a pretty bad wreck. Wow. Wow. And uh, the fact that, you know, again, you're, you're talking about, what, 1992 here, right? That's right. So we, you don't have the concussion protocols that we have back then. Let's call this right. replay here with Tony okay. Schiavone. Big high drop kick from Tom Zink on Bob something or another. Enough. It's Bob something or another. Here he comes off the top. Oh, with his package in full flight. It's a missile drop kick from the missile man himself. And the winner of the match, Tom Zink. Da, 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 da. Tom Zink. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Back we go to Jim Ross after this. Her. Welcome back to WCW Saturday Night. Of course, we couldn't get an Oklahoma country star. Instead, we had to go to Redneck, Alabama. Uh, old Conrad Thompson, suspect at best. We've got somebody who don't even know Conrad, probably the richest Alabamian of all, Mr. Randy Owen. Randy, what's going on, man? Well, I did know a little nine-year-old prick from Gunnersville, Alabama, a long time ago that uh, kept bothering my ass. Uh, well, that could have been him. He had a big, bushy head. His dad was a prison guard at one time and uh, just a real, not, real kind of a pain-in-the-ass guy. That could have been the guy you're talking about. But uh, Gunners of Alabama only has like 50 people, and so uh, it could have been. Well, him. no, I have no good authority. That's not true. Of course, we just learned last week that Conrad's dad worked at the Snuggery in Chicago. Uh, so let's go back to the ring, see what we've got next for you. Turns out it's old Nikita Koloff from Boaz, Alabama. Why can't we get away from these Alabama motherfuckers? Take it away, Tony. Shatoata. I married Miss Alabama, then she died on me. Shatoata. He did marry a girl from Boaz, Alabama. You do know that. Don't Apparently you? she died, and, and she now died. he likes to make fun of this. Now let's talk about. What did she die of? Yeah. Uh, Nikita, had... A sickle. They gave her the sickle. <laughs> the Russian sickle. Oh. I'm, I'm <laughs> not, not, not cell anemia. The clothesline. <laughs> so. <laughs> I am going. Everybody. I'm going. <laughs> Are you okay? He's <laughs> out. Are you all right, Tony? <laughs> you have eyes? Tony's dead again. This always <laughs> happens. <laughs> I, ap I apologize to everybody. I'm going straight to hell after this show. It's a one I don't think I'm going to make it through it because there's going to be a lightning bolt come down from heaven to strike me on the top of the head. Oh, my God, Nikita, I'm so sorry. But it was funny. Hey, so let me ask you this. <laughs> Um, I know I'm in the minority, but I really like this Mr. Hughes gimmick. Oh, yeah. Sort of the badass bodyguard. Absolutely. It almost felt like it was right out of a movie, right? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I know it's pretty controversial at the time to be wrestling in a suit, to be wearing a tie, to have sunglasses, but it was a fucking innovative, cool look. He looked like a movie bad guy. Yeah, and not only that, Curtis Hughes could work. He was he could do some things, man. He could really do some things, and uh, I think later on, uh, 
or maybe earlier on, uh, they had, uh, it was actually early on, they had Curtis had, was, you know, had some matches to where they put him over, but I think right now they use him more as, as kind of a job guy here against Nikita. Hey, check who's uh, the referee is. It's Fonzie. Woo. It's Bill Alfonso. Yes, sir. Who sure. we just covered on our ACW episode. Still no whistle, probably, no Taz. No whistle, no Taz. That's right. Uh, but he's still from the redneck part of Florida. Yeah, and that would be northern Florida. Absolutely. Let's talk about what's going on here sort of behind the scenes. Brian Pillman is out here with a back injury that he sustained in April. What was going on with Pillman during this era? Do you recall? Uh did he hurt his back in a hot tag with Tom Zane? No, no. He he hurt his tag from doing the crazy shit that he would do in the ring. That's what he hurt his back from. Uh, Cactus Jack appeared on the Howard Stern Show for about a half hour, and he was with Fred the Elephant Boy, <laughs> and they were trying to promote a show at the Meadowlands. Now, you just started laughing. Are you out of the loop on Fred the Elephant Boy? I just... <laughs> Tell me. You're not ready for Fred the Elephant Boy, are you? <laughs> Oh God! <laughs> Are you okay? Oh, Fred the elephant boy. <laughs> you're. <laughs> you're that sheriff. I don't know. I don't know. Mask. You're thinking of mask. No. <laughs> Tony, are you okay? Tony's dead again. Oh no. Oh God. Holy shit, Fred the elephant boy. He just. He just are you okay? Are you all right? I think so. Where are we here? Well, Zakina's losing a test of strength. Or now he's winning. Uh, dick to the dick by Curtis Hill. Yes. The oh, boy. Jesus. Mike Jones. <laughs> hey. hey, listen. Uh, I don't know. It's just Fred the Elephant Boy kind of just rolled off the tongue there. It was like. It was like real simple for you to say. <laughs> <laughs> He's been a part of the show for like 30 years. Okay. I haven't watched Howard Stern or listened to him. So anyway, what did he and the elephant boy do? <laughs> well, they promoted tickets for your show at the Meadowlands. Okay, good. In late March. Okay. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just move along. Thank God we got that one out. The, okay. <laughs> the format of WCW Saturday Night was changing. Yeah, boy. Uh, the, the first show on April 4th did a 2.2 rating, and they went about 90 minutes. Jesse Ventura at the time was the new co-host. And you guys did co-host with these. Kip Fry was the co-host on the second one. Bill Freilich on April 14th. Ooh. Jason Hervey on May 2nd. And, of course, Randy Owen is here on May 9th. Uh, is this a Kip Fry idea to sort of get involved with more of the mainstream? Yeah, that was what he wanted to do. We also had Dave Casper on. Did you have that list? Dave Casper was like a NFL tight end. They had him on, too. And this was well after his career was over. Uh, just anybody they could get. And... Uh, they had Janie Engel, and uh, people who have been in wrestling for many years know who Janie Engel is. And Janie was well, like was the person responsible to try to book these people, and it wasn't easy to do, you know, to get these people in because we weren't mainstream. It would have been much easier if we were in the WWF at that time, but here we are, WCW. Um, the new format of the show also seemed to include almost a guaranteed two out of three falls match. And we're going to see one later today, but you guys really relied on two out of three falls matches in this era. Whose idea I mean, was Kip a big proponent of two out of three falls or why was that a staple? Uh, no, they just, because they just didn't want to burn up their talent and they just wanted to uh, do something different. Well, nothing wrong with that. Uh, uh, Nikita, D- Nikita, Dusty was booking back here. Dusty's booking this. Yes. Uh-huh. Okay. Well, that explains why Nikita's here, does it not? Yes, it sure does. Stephen The Truth on Channel 69 in Atlanta said a line that got some WCW folks upset on a recent broadcast when he said he was sorry to hear about a terrible accident that befell Eric Bischoff. He fell down and broke his hair. (laughs) (laughs) And that pissed people at WCW off? According to the Wrestling Observer Newsletter, I'm asking you, do you think um, (laughs) Bischoff or anybody else gave a shit? No. It feels like they'd just be happy to be mentioned on the news. Exactly. Good God. That's a, absolutely. And that's kind of a funny line, too. So yeah. why would we be pissed off about it? WCW, this is a, straight from the Observer. WCW yeah. will be holding a mandatory steroid seminar for all wrestlers on April 28th in Birmingham with Dr. David Lee Black from yeah. Tennessee speaking. 
Black does the laboratory analysis for the WWF steroid testing and will probably lead up the WCW mandatory compliance program. Yeah. What do you remember about the implementation of a steroid policy here? Of course, at the time, Titan has Vince McMahon on the hot seat. He's in the fight of his life with the federal government all over steroids. You guys probably feel like you need to respond in kind. Mm -hmm. Whose idea is it to reach out to the guy who's sort of administering things for the WWF? Kip Fry, because he's a lawyer, it's, he has his idea to do that. And and you're right, because of what's going on with McMahon, we're trying to stay one step ahead of it. Right. Uh, and, and not have things, you know, sent or uh, spilled on us. In other words, if the if the the nation is looking at the WWF as being steroid ridden, ridden, they're going to look at us next. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to get out in front of it. Meltzer was reporting around this time that the idea that was presented to him was that the NWA is going to be presented as a worldwide organization, and WCW is essentially going to be their American member. The concept here is there would be annual NWA tournaments and champions would be crowned, but the NWA champion wouldn't regularly appear defending the titles on WCW big shows, sort of like the NBA and the Olympics, at least in Meltzer's theory. Yeah. Um, do you remember there being some sort of concept for this, and specifically – it's uh, rumored here that you guys are going to do a top 10 tournament on worldwide for May sweeps. And the only match that had really been hyped was Rick Rude versus Terrence Taylor. Yeah. And so there would be some face versus face and some heel versus heel matches just to add to the legitimacy. It's a weird time though, because of course I think most people remember in this era, Rick Flair had left with the NWA world title and that sort of brought on just all kinds of chaos do you remember there being talk that WCW would essentially just be the American arm of the NWA? I remember that talk. We had a lot of harebrained ideas that went through uh, creative at that time. The top 10, I remember specifically, was a Jim Ross idea. R ranking the wrestlers ranking the on wrestlers, TV. Ranking the wrestlers. On, he was really big into that because he was big into football. football. And, and, and it's and a big deal. You right. live and die by it. Right. And top 10 rankings. So he was a, really a big... Uh, a proponent of that but as far as nwa being a worldwide organization and wcw being a national organization there were all those kinds of ideas that really never panned out i mean we did do at one time we did the wcw international title we did that last week world title and the then the wcw title uh and then there was an nwa title one time and then they when did we uh if you uh kickstart my memory here when did we uh put them both together, unify the titles. Didn't we unify them at one time? That's right. You would. But, I mean, even the show we talked about in 94 right, was, hadn't really happened right, just yet. Right. So when the NWA sort of pulls out, they called it the international right. title, and that's when they started to run them as international, right. the big gold belt, right. and then the world title. They would unify them at a Clash of the Champions with Sting and uh, Ric Flair. Right. Of course, Ric Flair became victorious. The, univer the uh, unified champion. There was a lot of crazy ideas conrad that came out of creative that were uh, leaked to dave Meltzer, and he would put on his or even wade keller they would put on the dirt sheets as really going to happen and it never happened you so know? let's run through this we just saw nikita koloff get the victory no surprise give us the call here tony okay nikita goes for the top he reaches up around the crotch finger up the ass and you can tell the reaction there of mr hughes finger the ass finger the ass and down he goes and here goes Nikita with his Russian sickle. Kaboom! Taking the shot. And down goes the big cat, Mr. Hughes, Curtis Hughes, and Fonzie down for the one, two, three. And your winner is Nikita Koloff. Her. Welcome back to WCW Saturday Night, folks. And, of course, I'm still here in my double-breasted coat talking about term life insurance here with Randy Owen. And, Randy, I got to know, what's your coverage looking like? Are you prepared for things that happen to you later in life with your family? No, not really. I'm just uh, trying to make as much money as I can. I think uh, country music is going to last forever, probably as long as NASCAR. Uh, and uh, maybe probably as long as the WCW is going to last. Uh, I think WCW will be around forever, Jim. And I think NASCAR will as well. So I think country music will as well for us. Uh, and I'm just going to retire on what I've been making here in 1992. Well, I don't know if you're going to be able to retire building shit like a guitar-shaped pool, but best of luck with that. Me, on the other hand, I got my eye on sauces. You hear me? I'm talking about barbecue sauces. Y'all like barbecue up in Fort Payne? Yeah, we do. We like mustard, too.
Of course you do. And that's why you need to check out that Creole mustard right here, right now, over at jrsbarbecue.com. Now, it ain't exactly like you spell it. Somebody cyber squatting my ass. Just Google me, goddammit. Google me. Google me. Google me. <laughs> Woo. Woo. Bring him down. Who, who we got coming out of this? Oh. Speaking of Google, here he comes. America's sexiest Tom Selleck impersonator. It's Ravishing Rick Rude. Look at him go. Got his shirt tucked in like Eric Bischoff wants. <laughs> Got them pants just like he likes it, double pleats and all. He's here to tell us why he wasn't a big star on the other organization and why we should buy him as a big star here. Go ahead, have a seat right there. Go ahead and have a seat right there. Ugh, now, as you get comfortable, we're going to talk about how Ultimate Warrior squashed your ass and Hogan refused to work with you. But before we get there, we got to try to build your ass up, and we're going to ask old Fort Payne what, you th- what he thinks about you. Well, I was wondering, uh, those abs, uh, how long does it take to get those abs the way they are right now? I just wondered. Just my, my wife wants to know. Well, tell your wife, call me sometime, and I'll let her know. You know what I think of you? Huh. <laughs> Fuck you and fuck country music. And while we're at it, fuck NASCAR because wrestling is where it's at. I'm where it's at. I get these washboard ads by working out, not strumming on the fucking guitar, not singing, not playing softball, not shopping at Boaz or not even eating ribs in Alabama. I'm a real man. So these abs come naturally. I am the mid, well, I almost said million dollar man, but that's Ted DiBiase. But I am, <laughs> I, I may be, I may not be as over as Jim Ross would think. And Hulk Hogan may not want to work with me. Or maybe I lost to the ultimate warrior, but fuck everybody. Now, hang on now. First of all, I need to talk about why you lost to that Indian goof, the ultimate warrior. Now, Harley Race has told me that he is the worst wrestler on God's green earth. And I need to know why that ultimate warrior goof squashed you at WrestleMania. Well, you know, when Vince McMahon tells you to do something, you fucking do it. You probably don't know that right now, but you're going to find out very soon that when Vince McMahon says fucking jump, you're going to say how fucking high. You're not only going to say how fucking high, he's going to probably tell you, look at the fans here, they'll agree with me. They're probably going to tell you to put a fucking cowboy hat on one day, huh? And be a gimmick instead of an announcer with a double-breasted suit on. So he told me to lose that motherfucking Indian, and I lost to him. Just wait to what he tells you to do coming up later this decade. Three, he's still going. And I <laughs> <laughs> and also well, hang on now hang on now I, need, I got a question for you Rick, okay. Rick why are you wearing a pinky ring are you a goddamn pimp I mean only pimps wear pinky rings in Oklahoma mm. now there's not a lot of pimps in Oklahoma but if there were they'd have an eye for her here she comes ladies and gentlemen it's Medusa it's Medusa it's Medusa now about five years from now maybe a little longer she's gonna be wrestling in a barbecue match where we're gonna cover her in barbecue sauce and let me tell you <laughs> I'd be all about that. But tonight, she's with you. She's with you, Rick Rude. And we need to know what exactly is Medusa doing with you? Ho, ho, ho. Let me say this, that Tony Schiavone gave me permission to stand here with Medusa or sit here with Medusa. And all these fans know that fat ass whore just loves Medusa. Okay. So I'm here with her under his guidance, under his permission. So everybody just settle the fuck down. Well, now the rumor is that Ricky Steamboat has been stalking Medusa. Now we know, and we have it on good a good authority that Medusa is a, is is not interested, and that Ricky Steamboat is married. Let's get you one. I'd like to ask uh, Medusa as though they they knew. Did right, hang on, hang on. Let's just pause right here. <laughs> Medusa has been stalked by Ricky Steamboat. And they're throwing to the crowd here because Missy Hyatt has mm-hmm. found a question from the audience uh-huh. where a woman in the crowd is alleging that Ricky Steamboat has been cheating on his wife uh-huh. and she uh-huh. is Ricky Steamboat's mistress, uh-huh. which tells me Bonnie Steamboat's dead. <laughs> well, they're looking. Hang on, folks. I have it on good authority that Ricky Steamboat would never cheat. But it looks like old Beth Flair here, <laughs> Charlotte's mama. Well, it looks like. I want to tell you something right now. Come down here and have a little bit of me. What? What the fuck? Yeah. What the fuck? Okay. Ooh, my God. They're going to have a cat fight here. 
I don't know what Medusa's asking. Do you want to be on WrestlingVixens.com? Do you want to be on WrestlingVixens.com? You got all you got to do is show them titty meats and you get twenty nine ninety nine. I'm talking about not two thousand nine hundred ninety nine dollars, but I'll give you one subscriber. Uh oh, uh oh, coming to the ring, coming to the ring. Beth Flair, coming there. Jr. You piece of shit. Okay, you got me pregnant. <laughs> I, this is Jerry Springer at its worst. I feel like I should tell everybody. Oh, oh, Doug oh. Gillinger. Oh. Doug Gillinger taking out the Jezebel. Yes, sir. The lady who was alleging that she's been cheating with Ricky Steamboat. Uh-huh. She's killing K. Fabe. Uh-huh. I don't know what's going on right now. Okay. I feel like we should sort of catch everybody up. That was not really Beth Flair. We're just having fun. Yes, we are. And Jr. didn't knock up that girl. Right. We just have fun. <laughs> say, what the fuck have I got myself into here? <laughs> I was just going to talk about country music, softball, Boaz, Alabama. That's all I want to talk about. For pain. Oh, man. Medusa's just all live, isn't she? Oh. <laughs> What's oh, Rick Root saying right Rick, here? Uh, Rick Root says, shut the fuck up, okay? I didn't knock up any of these Her, Shut up, Rick Root. I'm talking about <laughs> WCW Saturday Night, which needs to be WCW Saturday Night with Jim Ross. That's what it's called over at Westwood One. We'll be right back. All right, folks, we're back. And let me tell you, I'm pretty excited to be here with Randy Owen. We got all the whores gone. Everybody's cheating on everybody. Everybody's breaking up households. Medusa was gone. Medusa's not a whore. Medusa's a fine young lady. Isn't that right, Randy? Well, I still smell her perfume right here in this chair because she was on that side. And well, it's too bad you'll never find out because Medusa's married. Now, she's not married to Eddie Gilbert right now. She's not married to that Marine. She's probably married to somebody else, but she's been married a lot. Yeah, well, I do understand that uh, Tony Schiavone's awfully fond of her. Well, Tony Schiavone's fond of everybody who has a plus two. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> now, on that note, let's see if we can't find some action. Oh, my name is Vinny Vegas, uh, and you're talking about a shitty gimmick? Yo, I got one, okay? I got one shitty gimmick, and I'm going to go from this. They're going to stick a fucking pointed hat on me, and I'm going to walk down as Oz. But finally, I'm going to do like most people do. I'm going to go to the WWF and get a fucking good gimmick, and then I'm going to take it and go somewhere else. Oh, and by the way, I did play basketball for Tennessee. Don DeVoe, I knocked your fucking ass out. So we go to the ring, and we see Vinny Vegas. Uh, and Vinny Vegas is going to be in singles action here. Of course, that would go on to be Kevin Nash. He's got on the white button up. He's got on the suspenders and the sport coat with the uh, pink or purple lapels bouncing around in the corner. It looks like uh, Tony Schiavone. I mean, how would you how would you classify this guy? This is Freddie something or the other. This is Bob something or the other's brother. Freddie something or the other. Uh, and uh, they're going to do it. Uh, you know. Uh, Conrad. Let me just tell you, before you say what you're about to say, and I think you're going to say what I'm going to say, this Finny Vegas character could have worked. You're damn right. This Finny Vegas character could have worked. worked you damn right. Because he pulled it off. Uh-huh. He had great charisma. Yes, he did. He had decent promos. Right. I mean, he had all the making. Now, a lot of people make fun of this. This is not Oz. No. This is not Master Blaster. This could have been a gimmick. There was not a, a prominent Italian person in wrestling, certainly not Tony Schiavone. This could have been the answer. Yes. And unfortunately, he was in the wrong promotion to do that because in the WWF, they were star makers and we just didn't do it. You know what? A couple I, I need, of years prior to this, Goodfellas is the number one movie in America. Right. Am, is, this the, is this the Von Braun Civic Center? No, it's absolutely not. It's not? Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm just noticing the people down front. Uh, God. What, what are you trying to say? I'm just trying to, they look like they're right out of Alabama. Alabama, the movie. Oh, you know what? I just, I threw it my Google machine. They're from Fuck Your Mom, Tony Schiavone. <laughs> so I don't know if you're familiar with that town. Yes, I am. Population 38,000. <laughs> and all of them are brothers and sisters. Yes, sir. Watch out. Vinny Vegas. He's going to roll the dice. Oh. One. No, he's not fucking ready, buddy. He's not ready until he wants he wants to put snake eyes on him, doesn't he? Yeah. Man, Kevin Nash, what he lacked in wrestling moves, really made up for with character, didn't he? Uh, I mean, he knew how to look for the camera, do yeah. the facials. Great charisma. He knew how to sell it. That yeah. dude had it dripping off of him, man. Yes, he did. Absolutely he did. You sure we're not in Alabama? Take a look at those people down front. <laughs> you sure? Good God. So all those women in the crowd a minute ago, just so we're clear, okay. is saying that they had affairs with Ricky Steamboat. Uh-huh. And he's been a white meat babyface. What do you think about that? Yeah. 
Well, I think we're trying to make it too much of a, of a soap opera instead of a wrestling match, wrestling show. It's my own fault. One, two, three. Snake Eyes, got him. That's it. Winner. Vinny Vegas. Where's the hard camera? There you go. He knows where it is. Absolutely. Don't put you back to it. Who would have thought at this point he's going to be one of the biggest stars in the business? I mean, I saw the natural charisma here, and I know this this character could have worked, but I think any character can work if it's got the right performer behind it believing in it, right? Yep. And the right promotion behind it. Her. All right, folks, we're back. Old Vinny Vegas won with a damn snake eyes. Of course, that's what Oklahoma's going to come up this year. Old Baker Mayfield, I don't know where he's going in the draft, and nobody else does either. But first, we need to talk about what's going on in World Championship Wrestling. Here's my new boss before he fires my ass, Eric Bischoff. Thank you very much, JR. And I'd like to talk to this broom right now, but I'm not going to because that was on WWE, and it was, of course, on my uh, interview that I had. But I do want to talk about what's going on with World Championship Wrestling Magazine. Oh. Old Fat Arn Anderson and an old dumb Bobby Eaton together. And courtesy of photographs and courtesy of Brent, uh, De- Dennis Brent, the magazine, as you can tell that most pictures look pretty good, but these look like shit. And you wonder why our magazine didn't last. As you can see, Arn Anderson looking at the crotch of Rick Steiner right now and Bobby Eaton pulling on the neck, wondering where his next meal is going to come from. Scott Steiner, though, as no, you wait, can see. No, wait, who is that? <laughs> oh, Ham cubes. There you go. Thank you. Isn't going to Paul Polly dangerously? If someone stuck their finger up his ass, you can see, and there you see. School board gets the win. That's right. School board and ham cubes are your winners in the cage match that happened right here on WCW the magazine. And there you see that guy on your left, right there, is running the school board in Cherokee County, Georgia. That's right. That's right. We're running the school board, and I'm also running the Shonies. That's right. I'm also running the Shonies. Come by, and we've got a great breakfast buffet that starts at 6.30 on Saturday mornings and goes till noon. If you want eggs and bacon after 12 noon, fuck you. You're not getting them. That's when, I, that's when our lunch buffet starts. So don't come in looking for an omelet. Roo, 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 roo. A's, B's, Parents, leave my ass alone. I don't give a shit about your kid. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that wraps it up here from the Control okay. Center. Go I'm ahead. Eric Bischoff. I hope I don't break my hair later today, but if I do, we'll have this to remember us by. Well, but I'm the living legend. I don't give a fuck who you are. I'm going to know Brock Lesnar, but I'm the living legend. Who's the girl with the big boo? Oh, Missy. I shouldn't say that. Wait a minute. Let's go in here. Wow. Ladies and gentlemen, with pandemonium here, what's going on with the Dangerous Alliance? It certainly feels like there's cracks in the foundation with Larry Zabisco out of weed and Paul Dangerously unable to restock him. Usually Paul Dangerously can come through on the weed. Hopefully he gets that together before he starts ECW because Lord knows he wasn't paying them in checks. He was paying them in pharmaceuticals. Let's go to the videotape. Okay. Where's... <laughs> Give me the, all the weed you got in your car, motherfucker. Whoa, give me all the weed you got in your car. Where is it? Where's the fucking weed? Okay, it's uh, underneath the mat here somewhere. It's got to be underneath the mat. Okay, who's this? Who's, what the fuck are we digitizing the dragon's face for? Oh, blood. because it's blood. That's right. Wrestle War 92, folks. We hope you buy this pay-per-view, basically because my job depends on it. It won't be long and Kip Fry will be fucking fired. So actually, I'd prefer you not buy the pay-per-view so I can take over as soon as I do. I'm going to run this shit like it's my own money. Ha ha, not really. I'm going to spin like a fucking madman. I'm going to get Hulk Hogan. I'm going to get Ric Flair. I'm going to get Macho Man Randy Savage. Hey, and don't you worry. I got Mean Gene. I got Bobby Heenan. I got Jesse Ventura. Now, I'm not going to use Jesse Ventura because fuck him. But I'm going to get everybody. And I'm going to spin like a fucking madman. We're even going head to head with Monday Night Raw. You probably don't know what that is because it's not out yet. But when it comes out, I'm going to compete. And I'm going to get them to spend millions of dollars. You hear me? Millions of dollars. I'm even going to redo all the theme music under my own music company i don't know how to play an instrument neither does matt coon doesn't keep him from making money in music won't keep me either don't forget to find me on my new podcast 83 weeks by the way oh miguelito perez and el Boricua from puerto rico they're taking on the steiner brothers you can guess who wins chris benoit and beef wellington they're taking on jushin liner and brian, <laughs> brian, brian. beef wellington's not going over folks i don't know how <laughs> 
Steve Williams and T and Terry Gordy, they're Her. taking on the O'Days. Her. Boy, it's going to be a real question who wins there. Her. <laughs> and we're not done yet with these NWA World Tag Team title first oh. matchup brackets. Mm. We've also got the Malenkos from Europe, and by that we mean South Florida, and Ricky Steamboat and Nikita Koloff are going to squash them and in short order. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm not booking this shit, but when I do, I'm going to watch Mortal Kombat and get a good idea. You know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about hundreds of thousands of dollars on lasers that nobody gives a fuck about. Don't forget, check it out, and I'm going to go hang out with DDP. And you could probably guess why, but we're not going to talk about it on the show because Conrad Thompson's a nice guy, and he's not going to spill all my family secrets. Don't forget to subscribe to 83 Weeks. That's right, 83 Weeks. We're coming at you live on Twitch, on iTunes, on Spotify, <laughs> on iHeartRadio. Her. All right, folks, we're back. Hope everybody's listening to the podcast. It's on Westwood One. That's right, Westwood One. Now, have you tried my beef jerky, Randy Owen? Have you tried it? I need an answer. No, but I do know that Annette Yother did Eric's makeup, and pretty soon she's going to try to run the company. I do know that. Uh, and that's going to happen a few weeks or months down the road. Only thing I can say is I still don't know what the fuck I'm doing here. I don't know. I mean, it's a wrestling match, a wrestling show. It's a soap opera. It's a fucking, I, don't, I just don't fucking know. Only thing I know is softball, Boaz, Alabama, and NASCAR. Well, I have a good authority that you're also the fire hydrant capital of the world, and you make a lot of socks. Now, what that's good for, who knows? Speaking of things that do good for you that we don't know what to do with, here's the diamond stud. Well, we're going to go here now uh, to uh, the Diamond Stud, eh, eh, and uh, he is going to come in. Uh, this is Diamond Stud before he became a Razor Ramon, and again, this is a pretty good gimmick, and we don't know what to do with it, right? It's a great gimmick, and I really loved – you know, I made this comment the other day, and I know this sounds really weird, but you look at Scott Steiner's stature, just his physique, his height, his, his musculature – he looks like a fucking pro wrestler, does he not? This yeah. is the prototype of what a wrestler looks like. Yes, right. Absolutely does. And you guys don't know what to do with him, so you put him in there, beat up a guy with Zubaz on. Right, exactly. And uh, he not only that, he, he looks the part, and he's got a, still one of the great working punches of all time. So the kid can work. Kids work pretty hard. See that? That's, that's a good working punch. It's worth mentioning this show was taped on April 27th. It aired on May 9th. And uh, recently, and this is worth mentioning, especially with what we've been covering so far, Paulie Dangerously and Rick Rude both signed two-year contracts, so they're going to double down on them here in this show, knowing they're going to stick around. There's a lot of rumor and innuendo that Paulie Dangerously was a guy who really figured out how to sort of take advantage of the system. There's a lot of the guys who would say that he even figured out how to manipulate the travel situation with the airline tickets. Have you heard that story? No, I have not. Okay, well maybe maybe I'm making that up. Wow, that's pretty. That's pretty. Uh, wow. According to the rumor and innuendo, a lot of guys learned how to make side money by getting their their airline tickets. This is before the days of smartphones and electronic tickets. Right. They would have paper tickets. So if they canceled them and then started another one, those tickets still had value. They would bank a lot of them, and then all of a sudden they had all kinds of cash and credit from the airlines. And WCW is not really monitoring that. Wow. Some people will pin Paul Heyman for that. Some will not. But eventually he has a falling out with WCW. I kind of thought that's what you always believed to be the falling out. That's not the case, though, no. based on your reaction. No, not at all. I, I, uh, you know, I had heard that NBA referees did that, and a lot of them got fired because of it. Right. But I didn't hear that that happened in wrestling. Wow. Yeah, it did happen in wrestling. I don't know for sure that it was Paul Heyman, but some people have sort of freestyled that that was the case. One, two, three. And uh, the Razor's Edge is the finish here. Uh, of course, it's not called the Razor's Edge, but it will be in about a year when he becomes a much bigger star. Look at fucking Scott Hall, man, here, and call this replay. What a phenomenal finish. He goes for a choke slam, and this is Castrol's high-performance replay. Big choke slam. The Castrol also used on the hair of the Diamond Stud right now as well. As you can see, it is the ah, ah, right across the 35 movable vertebrae in the neck. And down he goes with the Diamond because. So what was that called again? The diamond cutter, not the diamond cutter. The, the razor's, razor's edge, edge, the outsider's edge. Yeah, outsider's it was probably edge. called something else here, but we yeah. don't fucking do our homework on this show. All right, her. All right, we're back here, folks, and we're excited to be here. Not really, but I'm trying to negotiate right now to get up to WWF. I'm gonna hope to call that next WrestleMania. They're probably gonna put my big old ass in a toga, but I'll do anything to get out of the fuck here. How anxious are you to leave Alabama, Randy? Well, I don't know. I'm making some pretty good money. Uh, I don't really want to leave. I'm like most people in Alabama. I just think that uh, the end of the world is at the Georgia line. <laughs> 
<laughs> on the east and the end of the world's at the Mississippi line on the west. Well, it is, unless you got a guitar-shaped pool. Let's go to the replay here where we got Raven before he gave a shit and maybe the most talented Armstrong nobody talks about. Yeah, Brad Armstrong. And uh, this is when uh, Raven was Scotty the Body, I do believe, wasn't he? Or was he? Uh, no, he, yeah, that's exactly right. Okay. Scotty the Body, and then he became after that uh, some other. Scotty Flamingo Scotty up Flamingo. north. Mm -hmm. So there you go. Uh, Scotty the Body and, uh, again, Brad Armstrong going at Brad Armstrong, I saw Brad Armstrong wrestle. Ric Flair on the main event at the Omni in Atlanta was as good a wrestling match you'll ever want to see. But really? again, he, But again, it was just one of those things where they didn't really have an angle. We were running TBS, and they just put Brad on top against Flair. And it did quite well. I need to find out who this guy down is down at the bottom here. Did you notice this? John from Florida. John from Florida? Something in Florida. <laughs> or something other in Florida. BA? No, no, not BA. There's somebody that's a second down at Scotty Flamingo or Scotty the Butt. There he is right there. He looks like a. His name is JT Southern, and you may remember him. He was also the guy, if you recall, we covered a few weeks ago. Where Cactus Chat got in a fight with a member of the band. Band, right. Okay. That was JT Southern. Okay. Very good. These guys are going to go about eight and a half minutes. Hmm. Um, you can guess what the finish is going to be. I guess it's worth talking about because we've been having a lot of fun on this show. But there are so many guys who are going to be really, really big stars on this show. Of course, Rick Rude arguably passed his prime. He had a really hot run in the WWF. Of course, we know his career is coming to an end in just two short years. Ricky Steamboat. Definitely past this time, but we've got Raven before he was Raven here. We've got Razor Ramon and Scott Hall before they were Razor Ramon and Scott Hall. Mm -hmm. We've got Diesel and Kevin Nash before they were Diesel and Kevin Nash. You guys had a shit ton of talent here in 92, right? Maybe a sleeper year for WCW where it's a case of inept management and you just didn't know exactly what you had. Well, exactly. I mean, the only thing you need to know about inept management is take a look at how the show is being formatted. And take a look at it. We've got Randy Owen of, of Alabama on the show who doesn't know a fuck all about what's going on here. I love Mason Raven. I know he's a great friend of yours, but Armstrong, one of the best mechanics in the business. And as they were doing some mat wrestling there, uh, he clearly gave Raven his arm and Raven had no idea that's what he was going for. Right. And so they just sort of covered it up and then immediately went to the spot. It feels like something that WCW could have edited out. Had anybody in the editing booth had any fucking idea what they were doing and wanted to do anything again we, we get back to the thing you know brad armstrong with his father brad grew up in the business the whole the whole the kids did and so he he had the aptitude for it probably a little bit more than scotty the body did but the fact is that when it's all known said and done raven became a bigger star than brad armstrong I guess we should mention that one of the things that uh, Jim Ross has really been plugging this entire time with Randy Owen mm -hmm. is a country music festival that Randy Owen was participating in called the June Jam. Huge. Are you in the loop on the June Jam, Cassio kid? Huge. Where did the June Jam take place? Fort Payne, Alabama. Fort Payne, Alabama? And that's what the J is on the jacket, right? That he has on? Multiple June Jams. Okay. All right. They don't have any more June Jams, do they? Or <laughs> Cassio Kid will be the new permanent co host here. <laughs> Apparently so. He's funnier than I am. <laughs> Jack me off, Tommy Young. Jack me off. <laughs> Those coats not yet available at lowestrules.com. <laughs> wow. I mean, it is a pretty big deal to have a concert in a little tea tiny town like Fort Payne. I mean, if you're not familiar with Fort Payne, seriously, throw that in your Google machine. And, and, that, and that's what. They're here to promote on WCW. It says a lot about this company and just sort of where they are. They're promoting country music festivals in Fort Payne. It's a town with one red light and fucking Katie's Catfish. And yeah, but, but Alabama was a big deal. and, and they Alabama made, was a huge deal. And, and they made Fort Payne, put Fort Payne on the map as far as country music. Oh, uh, yeah. They've got up to 8,000 people now. So right. <laughs> let's talk about Lex Luger. Executive <laughs> Vice President Kip Fry confirmed uh -huh. that the company had filed a lawsuit against Lex Luger for violating their contract release agreement. So... Frey has said that the wording of Luger's contract and his release, which Frey himself put together, is confidential, but he believed that Luger and the WWF had gone way over the boundaries of what was allowable in that release 
by regularly appearing on WWF television, even if it's supposedly, quote unquote, to promote the WBF television show rather than the WWF. Now, as a reminder, Luger's contract with WCW went through March of 93. And in the meantime, he was working with Vince McMahon's WBF. And of course, he's not presenting himself as a wrestler, but you know, mm. he debuts at WrestleMania eight about a month before doing promos for the WBF, but it certainly feels like a workaround. Does it not, Tony? Yeah, it does. Uh, and he, Kip Fry was, uh, Kip Fry was a lawyer. Okay. So he was, he was not as scared of throwing out lawsuits or battling people in court as a Jim Hurd was. And so it was a, it was a, kind of a different leadership now in WCW more on the offense. As a reminder here after Scotty Flamingo, uh, Scotty, the body, as we've been calling him. It's finished with Brad Armstrong. Barry Windham is going to take on Steve Austin in the main event. It's going to be two out of three falls. Uh, I guess it feels like the main event, but it might not actually be. Uh, but it is a phenomenal match, and uh, I can't wait for us to cover it. So hang in there, and we've got something extra for you after this Scotty Flamingo match. Yeah, also I want to let you know that, you know, and I mentioned that uh, the fans who came out to center stage were very pissed off about uh, what was going on. Uh they had to basically start out with the ring and the ring ropes on the set where Jim Ross and Randy Owen were was were not real ring ropes. So it was kind of like a set. Then they had to build the ring for them to wrestle in later on. And it took time to build that ring. And the fans had to sit there on their hands while they were building the ring. And so they even got even more pissed off. And I really think, I don't know, that there may be some more some more reporting that says otherwise, but I really think that this move to WCW Saturday night to change it from a actual wrestling show to a like a t- Tonight Show with Johnny Carson type format with some wrestling involved, I think it's what led to uh, Kip Fry's downfall. Really? Yeah. Just getting away from sort of what got you there. Exactly. Right. And it, maybe it turned some fans off having oh, yeah. this more studio setting. Right. And that's why the next guy they brought in was Bill Watts who went the complete other way with it. All wrestling. All wrestling. So, uh, so yeah, I, I, I really think so. And, and of course, you know, there was uh, Jack Petrick was still in, in charge of, of WCW then, and Kip Fry was one of his guys, and then Bill Shaw was given the company, uh, and he looked at the way things were going. And, again, this WCW Saturday night talk show, tonight show with Johnny Carson with Jim Ross-type format just – it was, it was terrible. It was, I think it was one of the low points of, of what we were doing back then. Yikes. Kind of oversold that spot, didn't he? Brian Pillman is going to be on the next week where Randy Owen is, so at least it's a wrestler. Yeah. That's, you know why he's on? We didn't have anybody that would come on that week. So we just went with the wrestler. What's your favorite Jason Hervey story? Uh, my favorite Jason Hervey story was the one where he and Eric Bischoff wrestled uh, J.T. Souther and, and Scotty the Body. And there you go. A suplex from the outside in. And Scotty Flamingo has his boy, J.T. Southern, hold down the foot of Armstrong. And as a result, Flamingo gets the win. Armstrong raises his hand as victory, and he's still carrying around his guitar. Yeah. Could be worse. Could be Van Hammer. Yeah, sticking his tongue out that's really at nice. the opponent. Uh-huh. I feel like we're in eighth grade. Her. All right, folks, welcome back. Now, instead of being inside the ring, now we're outside the ring, and this feels much different, doesn't yeah. it, Randy? It only took them an hour and a half to build the ring. That's right, because old Charles Robinson's not here to do all the goddamn work for this company. I might actually have to look for updating my resume. It's too bad Monster.com doesn't exist, because I'd find a new place to call wrestling or my podcast, of course, I'm kidding, folks. I'm on Westwood One now. Subscribe for free, leave and rate and review, but I digress. You know, I feel like since we're talking about Alabama with the lead singer of Alabama, we should remind everybody that old Conrad Thompson, suspect at best. Let's take a look two weeks ago, the very first fall of the match. Oh, how about that? Barry Windham over the top. One, two. These two guys can really get it, Conrad. They were really Steve really good. Austin, Barry Windham. Yes, I mean, two working motherfuckers. Yeah, absolutely. But again, uh, just last week on Spring Stampede, we saw like the forerunner of Stone Cold Steve Austin, and now we're just into the Californian type surfer type dude that was stunning Steve Austin. 
These guys are going to be working here in just a minute, but first we're catching you up on some replays. Uh, what talent we have here, where well, we've got arguably the, one of the greatest managers of all time, Paul Heyman on the outside, Steve Austin on the inside, but huh, right now we're getting ready to hook them up one more time. And, of course, the rattlesnake, Stone Cold Steve Austin, he's going to be out here to stomp a mud hole, walk it dry, and enjoy some fine barbecue sauce. I just hope that I'm not your color man because I have no what the fuck to say. I know how to sing and how to play softball. Oh, it's Rhubarb Jones. It's Rhubarb Jones of Y104 FM, and he is going to be the uh, ring announcer here for this event. I don't know how in the world we made the backstage area of center stage look so fucking good. <laughs> oh, what a fucking dive that place is. Oh, oh. And I'm Rhubarb Jones. I think Rhubarb just recently passed away. A moment of silence for Rhubarb. Hey, so let me ask you this. What's up with wrestlers wearing their underwear and a leather jacket? Can you explain <laughs> when you wear your underwear, boots, and a leather jacket? I don't understand. Thanks for that moment of silence for Rhubarb Jones. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Rhubarb did just pass. He was a, Rhubarb was a big country DJ in Atlanta. Oh, cool. Uh, so, leather jackets, tides. <laughs> I don't fucking know a rhubarb. <laughs> Okay, and I want to you see, here we go. Stunning Steve. Yeah. I like him better with the short hair and that long, you know, silly shit he had on. Steve Austin, obviously going to cuts our ruts here. He's got the <laughs> fucking bowl cut, the Casio Kid special. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you, you show up, you give him your $8 and say, I don't care about my life. And this is what you come out with. What is this truck? Well... You know, I, 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 I'm not, it is no, actually it's, uh, it's one of the, uh, it's one of the Steiner trunks. It's got the, yeah, it's got the different color Sharpies on it. You know, there's a yellow Sharpie mark and a blue Sharpie mark. Well, they and, pull them out of his ass and mark up the well, trunks. That's what or? they did. Yeah. Okay. okay. And Paulie dangerously now is going to be t- that, phone. that phone, man. Thrown from back in the nineties. I feel Four like, days. here's the deal. I feel like they should be called saved by the bell. Because they got Zach Morris's phone, and it looks like his trunks are the background from the Max. <laughs> yes. All right. Here we go. Every time I see Paul Lee, I think, I haven't gotten that fat. You know what's amazing to me is <laughs> there's no way that anybody in the crowd has any idea that in five short years, one of these guys is going to be the biggest star the industry's ever known. Yeah, and no one would have guessed Steve Austin. No, yeah. I mean, a lot of people thought he would be a top hand and he was a good hand and maybe he could be world champion, but lots of guys were world champion without ever being the tippy top guy ever. Right. And, and Steve Austin's going to be that and Barry Windham. Well, he's there too. Exactly. And Barry was such a great worker back then and just could do a lot of great, great shit. Paulie Barry. was a, a sensational manager. Barry Windham ever give you any fake hundred dollar bills? <laughs> no. No, but Kendall may have. Uh, but certainly Barry got me more drunk than I needed to ever be. I, I always ran from Barry Wyndham. Because Barry, being about 6'5", six, 6'6", six, six, and you know, upwards of 300 pounds or whatever, was uh, could hold a lot more alcohol than most of us. And so it was Speak for yourself. I'll drink your ass under the table. <laughs> well, I'm sure you will. The woman I married can do that, buddy. Uh, but Barry, I used to, she took advantage of you. <laughs> so, uh, so Barry used to, you know, uh, apply a lot, a lot of us with liquor and lot, watch us get drunk. And, and then you wake up with jalapenos in your and hair and a hamburgers in my hair. Yeah. That's a well-worn story. How about, how about the, uh, the new boots that Barry sporting here? Uh huh. Um, those are not Clifford Macias. Who was the guy who made those Austin hall? Cool. Good talk, Tony. <laughs> so let's talk a little bit about um, Austin pa- Hall is my banker. I don't I don't know if he made boots or not. Polly Dangerously here sporting the television title, almost like he's totally blanchard with the suit and whatnot. Right. That belt. Where do you reckon that wound up? I know that Stone Cold says he has a TV belt. Any idea who ran off with some of these belts? Mm. Rumored innuendo is that Teddy Long stole a whole bunch of them. Really? I, mean, I don't know that he did. I mean, it could be a tag well, team you know, match. Well, you know, last year I I got to hang out with Teddy for a little while. You should have asked him if he I, had any belts. Holla, holla. Yeah. I, had I known that, I would have said something to him about it. If he says they're in the attic, don't believe him. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I won't. But that's a legendary belt, too. That's the Tully Blanchard, Arn Anderson belt. Well, right? that's the bla- that one's on black leather. The one you're thinking about is the one that Arn used to have. On red that leather? Had the red leather okay. with black backing. Okay. That one's black on the front, red on the back. Okay. 
I'm just freestyling. I thought they had red on the front and red in the back in that one. Well, you'll see in a minute. I okay. mean, unless you're colorblind. Polly okay. Dangerously holding up to the camera. That looks black to me, but I'm from Alabama. Okay. All right. I got you. Uh, so, I don't know who has the belt. Thanks. Can I just tell you something? I know you very well, but yeah. Paul Heyman is still my favorite Jew in wrestling. Is he really? <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, you know, Paul apparently doesn't like me because he just doesn't. No, he, you took that because he was he was brief with you when he was working. Yeah. Okay. But when I came to see you called the Gwinnett Stripers game, you mm -hmm. were fucking brief with me because you were working. I didn't take it personal. I just knew you were at work. Mm -hmm. Snapmare takeover. Okay. Well, uh, thank you for chatting me up about that. Sorry, Paul. I'm sure I'm sure Paul likes me. Because I like you. Well, I'm not going to go that far. <laughs> okay. I'm just going to say he doesn't hate you. <laughs> yeah. Probably doesn't hate me. But uh, the, the flip side is he's still one of the best stick men in the business, if not maybe the best. Now, I thought you told us recently that Ric Flair was the best stick man. This is the second well, it, week in a row I've had to talk to you about this. I'm talking about different sticks, different type of sticks. And Ric Flair doesn't really do stick work much anymore, does he? I mean, he's retired. Or is he? Has he retired? retired what from wrestling he's retired from wrestling in 2008 from the wbf and i think 12 from tna okay so then paulie hasn't retired so right now he's the best stick man in the business okay thank you for agreeing with me on that cassio look at barry went over that short clothesline and i'm telling you the fans are really into this you know why the fans are into it because they finally get to see some fucking wrestling here tonight this is center stage and you've often shit on center stage but I feel like center stage would make a fine venue for MLW. I know Fusion's behind us, but there are more shows coming our way. And yep. this one would be a phenomenal one for MLW. Yeah, because I think MLW would know how to shoot it, know how to light it. Uh, it's not that WCW didn't. What I didn't like about center stage is what any of the guys who worked didn't like about it. The backstage area was dirty, old, not well lit. And it just was a depressing place to hang around all day. Now, recently, NXT was there, and I went there. And? It was dark, depressing, backstage, and it was just not a good place to hang out all day. It was worse than the Guilt Nightclub for MLW? Yes. In what regard? When I walked in, it reminded me of all the shit days of WCW. Now, That's, you were also in this building yeah. when Paul Orndorff slapped the fuck out of Vader in shower shoes. Right? Yeah, well, he, he didn't always, he, he knocked his ass down and stomped his head in the, on, the, on the concrete. So it's more than slapped the shit out of him. And, and I can almost tell you where it happened. Where? Okay. I'd uh, love to hear where. Okay. <laughs> it happened uh, right out the exit door uh, to the right of the hard cameras. I, I don't know exactly. We used to do uh, interviews. Yeah, to the right. There you go. We used to do. We used to do interviews on set during the day, and over the set was uh, on the side of the hard cameras where Paulie is stalking back and forth right now. To Paulie's right, there's an exit way right there, and that is where it was. So it was right outside those doors there where it happened. Never will forget that. And when I went there with NXT recently, guess what was in that same position where paulie or where uh orndorff knocked down vader i don't know the makeup chairs oh how excited were you so i just stood there for a little while just kind of soaking up the nostalgia so to speak i feel like we should tell everybody we're at 59 47 mm. in the show and we see stone cold doing an irish whip on barry windham <laughs> oh good oh fine boy barry could really come out of that corner with a lariat and there is one of the reasons Randy Anderson was one great referee right there. Out of position, so he leaps across and gets the two count. Did you buy Barry Windham as world champion when, when he became the NWA world champion in 93 and then ultimately dropped it to uh, Ric Flair? Or was it um, yeah, we, too we, late? Well, it, I thought it was too late. And not only that, we, we, we saw the match. We did it on the podcast you'll recall and Wyndham yeah Beach Blast 93 right and and it wasn't a good celebration so I think it I think it took away from that title of course we're talking about the big gold belt and right. here in 92 the big gold belt has just recently been shipped back to the company 
they're still rocking that uh, Ron Simmons, Big Van Vader, Sting, Lex Luger world title. And, of course, Skip Fry, being the lawyer he is, went on the offense to get it back. Just like we said. So, Of course, Paul Heyman is on the phone outside. Mm-hmm. He's probably renegotiating the contract for Brock Lesnar right now to go to the UFC. <laughs> Which, by the way, uh, Brock let yeah. Oh God, I don't want to have to do it. Or he may be just ordering Chick Fil A on the phone. Can you order Chick Fil A on the phone? Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Huh? Uber Eats. Oh, see, we live in Redneck, Alabama. We don't have Uber. You don't Eats have Uber here. Eats? Oh, no. It. Okay. I'm not going to plug what we do have because they don't advertise on the show. But you know who does advertise on the show? Savekade.com. Savekade.com. Kate.com, save Kate.com. Let me tell you why it's so easy to apply. Save Kate.com, save Kate.com, dot com, dot com, dot com. NMLS number 65084, Equal Housing Lender. If you want to buy a house with no money down, yes, sir. or consolidate all your credit card debt, get mm. rid of a uh, house payment yeah. or a car payment right. or some credit card debt or add on to your house, maybe it's time to make the wife happy, hmm. remodel, upgrade that kitchen, that bathroom, do it with no money out of pocket. No Whatever your out of pocket. one day we'd like to list looks like, we can make someday today at savek.com. No money money out of pocket skip your next two house payments you don't need perfect credit even with credit scores in the 500s we're your huckleberry save k.com what's that address again tony s-a-v-a-s-a s-a-v-a s-a-v-a try again s-a-v-e-c-a-d-e dot com Save K.com. Save K.com. Are you, are you doing a harmony? I'm going to tell you right now. <laughs> next week, it's just going to be Cassio Kid and Tony Schiavone. <laughs> and I'm fine with that because Cassio is way funnier than me. No, he's not. <laughs> Cassio, I've told you for like an hour that we've got an extra microphone over here. Just plug that. And, uh, he doesn't want to do it. Go. He doesn't want to do it. Okay. Like horrible audio. <laughs> <laughs> he does like horrible audio. <laughs> By the way, if you'd like to listen to Cassio Kid Monday through Friday, 6 to 10, check out Rocket 95.1. It's WRTT on any of your apps that you listen to. He is the morning show host of the number one morning show in Alabama. Oh, my God. It's Jimbo and Cassio on Rocket 95.1 here in Huntsville, Alabama. But they're a uh, pretty big time show that you should check out. So WRTT in any of your apps. Okay. Uh, he is the inventor of the button on a fur coat. We stole that directly from him. I also stole take a poop with your pants on. So if you're a fan of mine because of those things, wow. I just stole them directly from Cassie. I've given him credit many yeah. times. Yeah. Um, and he, he rocks the low key big hog. So it works out. It evens out. <laughs> So, Tony, do you want to plug your rest? Oh, you got baseball. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kind of holding the mic here. Do you, do you talk on mic on your radio show or off mic? LoisRules.com is where you can get your T-shirts. Oh, look at that. Superplex float over for the pin. One, One. two, three. Hook them up there. Whoa. There's a pin, but it's not the end, Whoa. ladies and gentlemen. It's two out of three falls. It's yes, it is. It's two out of three Uh-oh. falls, and look at the bloody mouth. And it looks like Cassio and Judy is ready, and he don't care. Oh, good God! <laughs> and can he continue? Is the question with the bloody mouth? Can he? Of, can he? Of, of course he can continue. Oh, Let's call the replay here, okay. Tony. Right hand cross side of the head. Wyndham goes down face first. Pick him up for a big superplex from the middle turnbuckle, and down goes Stunning Steve. Down goes Stunning Steve. He is out stone cold. One, two, three. Wyndham wins the first fall. Superplex off the top, of course, was his finishing move in WWF. I believe they called it the Widowmaker. We're getting ready for the second fall. As we come back, we get a a wide shot. Let me just tell you, I really loved this ring. This is my favorite ring of WCW with the blue and the black and the yellow ropes. We've got the uh, turnbuckles that are blue and yellow. We got the blue mat, the blue apron, but maybe most of all, what I appreciated about this set is the neon WCW Saturday night. I need to find one of those. Do you think Jackie Crockett has those? He might. I'd really love to have one of those neon WCW Saturday nights. I would plug it in right over my bed. Megan be damned. You know what I mean? Okay. You may like the, the neon sign. You may like this ring, but you can't like the show. 
Well, I mean, this is not a good show. It's okay. Stone Cold Steve Austin and Barry Wyndham. Oh, what yeah, but it's two hate? out of three freaking fall matches. <sighs> We've had no guys on doing promos with the exception of Rude. And then we had a gimmick uh, with the girls and everything. And we had uh, Randy Owen on with us. This is a shit show. Now, this are you is saying not, that because this, you're not on it and because JR I'm, was I'm, on No, it? I'm saying it because I'm glad I wasn't on it. I feel like you're being spiteful. You're mad at JR. I know JR's mad at me, but he, you shouldn't be mad at him. I'm not mad at JR. He and I are good buddies. You're the one that shits on him. I don't. I don't shit on him. Okay. I was on his show last week. How did I shit on him? Her. Oh, That's my God. Thing. Listen to you. <laughs> okay. Every single week on JR's podcast, okay. he says, Oh, Connie, I love those cheeks. Those cherub <laughs> cheeks. Oh, Connie, what's the dirt? Oh. My he boy. Do, he does that every week. Yeah. So now when I go, Hur, everybody's like, Oh, it's sacrilege. He never said her. He never said sassafras. It's creative license. Okay. I'm trying to be entertaining. Okay. we got. I got his button now, I think. Yeah. 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 I'll give you my button. Button in a minute. <laughs> I pushed the wall. I pushed his button right there. But anyway, back to the thing. It's not. This is not a good wrestling show. It's a great wrestling show. Uh, it, it's Steve Austin and Barry Windham on yeah, top. Yeah, and I agree. But not. But not two out of three falls. Okay? Well, what should they have done? What would have made you happy, Dave Meltzer? Uh, two more matches. Yeah, uh, highlight let's get some PN news out there, right? Yeah, we'll highlight some of your other talent. Muta. Okay. We've, this motherfucker hits you with Muta. <laughs> he didn't even say Muta. He said Muta. He's such a WWF fan. Get the fuck the out of here. Muta. The great Muta. The great Muta. That actually, that's the new pronunciation on the show, Forevermore. Are you good with that? Yeah. Muta. Muta, Muta. yeah. I feel, I feel like right now... He's that dude from he's that dude from Cape Fear, <laughs> or not Cape Fear, but uh, well, you know what I'm talking. Fear, well, <laughs> no, what's that fucking movie where the dude, Point Break point motherfucker break. leans out and says, "I need two Utah," <laughs> like that's the deal. I need two Utah. The so, great Utah. He needs he needs two sandwiches. Uh, the old great Utah. I need two Utah Utah. That's like Bubby Dudley. Bubby Dudley, right? <laughs> Daryl is over like Rover, by the way, from two weeks ago on ECW. Yeah. How would you describe this move, what we're seeing here, Tony? Uh, this is called take a shit on your back move. It, it, <laughs> it feels like uh, something out of the Kama Sutra book. <laughs> I wouldn't know anything about that book. <laughs> uh, Cassio's dying, much like I almost died in this room months ago. Real, shit on your back. <laughs> Real talk. Uh, you, you, and, you and those ever getting any scat play? <laughs> no, no, no. I'm as about as bo- we're about as boring as you'll find. <laughs> no shit. No One, two. <laughs> <laughs> no shit. No pun intended. Cassio Kills sells off mic. <laughs> oh God! So this is the second fall of the match. Yep. Yeah, this is the show that will never end. It's only an hour and 20 minutes, but it I'm feels like you, it's four hours long. It does. Yeah. It feels like it's four hours long. You're exactly right. And it's only an hour, 20 minutes, of course, with the commercial breaks taken out. But wow. I know why Vince put this on the network now. He wanted to show people how shitty it was. Man, look at Barry Windham selling his ass off yeah. on that turnbuckle, though. Great shot by the WCW cameraman. Yep. They're really working their ass off. I feel bad that we're having so much fun with this because in reality, Barry Windham and Steve Austin are having a hell of a match. Two out of three falls. I recommend that you go watch it. I know Tony's sort of burnt out on wrestling. No, he's no. seen enough Barrington Hughes to last a lifetime. <laughs> he's 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 called a lot of wrestling. So at this point, it's just another match. Yeah, but look, let me say this. You talked about the great camera shot. The director of WCW Saturday Night was a guy from Texas, Austin, Texas, named Dan Bynum. And Dan Bynum is now the director. We missed that shot. Dan Bynum is now the director of MLW Fusion. Really? Yeah. Man, it's a small world after all. Yeah, so they they got a guy with some wrestling background to call the shots. Second fall goes to Steve Austin. Who to guess? It's two out of three falls. One for Barry, one for Steve Austin. We're tied up as we go to fall number three. And there's no telling what's going to happen here. I feel like I should sort of smarten everybody up as we go to the replay. But, Tony, you first. Okay, here we go. Up we go. And he's going to put him in the stun gun. Up against the ropes that time. Paulie dangerously is cheering on the side. And he crawls over and goes one. The fuck? (laughs) To the break. 
We're at one ten forty six right now. <laughs> An hour ten fuck. minutes forty six seconds. We're winding down. We're home stretching it. Fuck the replay. And Barry Wyndham and Steve Austin firing off at each other. Series of right hands from Steve Austin and Barry Wyndham is staggered. Steve Austin not letting him up, giving him the business, throws him out of the ring, and Pee Wee Anderson here to try to gain control. Yeah. Look, they uh this is a heck of a match. It really is. I think we would all agree, but man, it's just I just don't like the show. Sorry. Knee lift from Steve Austin there sends Barry crashing down to the floor. Randy Anderson gonna count the count here, and the fans are right up in the action here on center stage. Barry Wyndham staggers around. Pee Wee trying to get him back in, and Steve Austin trying to bring him in the hard way. Tries to go for the suplex here. Let's see if he can get it. He hooks him up and over. There he goes. And uh, Barry Wyndham's in a bad spot here, Tony. Yeah, it sounds like you are uh, auditioning for a job. One, two, got a two count that time, and he pulled away from it. And uh, one of the things that was so uh, rough about center stage, too, just comes to mind. You can tell it here. It was a very, very, especially in the summer, a very hot place to work, man. It was brutal. And uh, it was when the lights were on in that place and the guys were under the lights like that, it was just really taxing on the guys. It was really a brutal place. And the fans are right on top of the action here. Yeah. It doesn't look like they have nearly as much room at ringside. Oh, jawbreaker from Barry Windham. Mm. Pull Steve Austin right down on top of his head. Let's see if he can go for the cover here. He's going to pick him up instead, run him into the ropes. Irish whip across the far Whoa. side. Misses the drop kick. Steve Austin, too smart for that. Uh, Steve Austin clearly in control of this match. He goes for the cover. And only got a two count out of that. Whew. Please. Randy looks looks around. This is the days, I think, before the referee had an IFB in. So. I, I would believe that to be the case. Yeah. Steve Austin, scoop slam. Going to go over to the second rope here and see what we can get put together. Are we going to see the famous Steve Austin elbow from the second rope? Woo. Oh, a little different variation. A little macho man action from the second rope. Barry Windham, a tall drink of water. Steve Austin goes for the pin. Very good. You're doing great, Conrad. Keep going, buddy. Come on. Come on. Steve Austin going to grab Vincent, a hold. That's what we're doing. Come on. At this point, when we're uh, searching for a little air, need a little breather, mm -hmm. well, let's grab a hold. Let's grab a headlock, mm -hmm. and uh, Steve Austin's going to lay it right. out in the middle. All right. So the fact you're seeing Paul Lee right now. Paul Lee holding that NWA okay. World's title like his best Tully Blanchard impression. Goddamn, pal, looks you're like doing that good. That suit is from the Gordon Gecko collection. Mm -hmm. Would you agree, Tony? I would agree. Goddamn, pal, you're doing good. Keep it up. Come on, keep the intensity oh. up there, Conrad. Let's go. Randy Anderson, of course, trying to see if Barry Windham's going to give it up. You ever seen anybody give up from a headlock before, Tony? Uh, no, I haven't. But of course, you know we have to check see if it's around the carotid artery. Well, I don't know if that was a thing, but we're going to go with it anyway. <laughs> of, of course, uh, Steve Austin still got the headlock. Here, artery. But Barry Windham trying to make his way to the feet, trying to get the fans behind him. Let's see if he can do it. Barry Windham. It's almost like the corduroy pants. Feet. Paul Heyman yelling instructions from ringside. Barry Wyndham trying to loosen the grip of Steve Austin. Let's see if he can do it. It's almost becoming a test of strength here, Tony. Yeah, Barry is. Wyndham yes, it is. Come. In the show now. Shot to the dick. Shot to the dick. In the Barry show Wyndham now. For God's sake. Control. Bring back my sanity. Elbow to the face. Scoop slam from Barry Wyndham. Oh, oh, Steve Austin. A little too heavy for him. Goes for oh, the pin. Jesus Christ. Kick, kick out on two. Barry Windham just barely hanging on. Every time he gets a little momentum, it feels like Steve Austin cuts him off, Tony. Did you do last time this week? Oh, uh huh? I got baseball. <laughs> I got a question. Okay, well, hang Steve on. Steve Austin looking for a little leverage, oh. putting his foot on the first oh, rope and yeah. the top rope. I hope he He's gets it. He's trying to cheat okay. so bad. I hope he gets it. Randy I hope he, uh, well, we got a bold in from WCW headquarters. Ricky Steamboat has con contacted WCW offices to deny all allegations that he, oh, oh on this evening's program. Oh, he has yeah. been granted an interview on tomorrow okay. night's WCW main event I'm at 6.05 on TBS. If we got anybody left to watch this fucking shit. What time zone? Uh, 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 Eastern. He Here's what I really appreciate. Okay. That you read like you're still hooked on phonics. <laughs> You started every word like you were fucking sounding it out and clapping. <laughs> what the fuck? How are you a professional broadcaster and you're like sounding out syllables? Well, let me say, I am a... 
I am a professional broadcaster that's not hooked on Phoenix, but I am hooked on shitty wrestling shows. Hypothetically, apparently. we learned this recently. If we were to go down to a public place and try to check out a book, uh-huh. read it for the weekend, and then take <laughs> it back, we didn't own the book. We were just going to borrow it for a little while and take it back. Where would we be going, Tony? <laughs> Uh, where would we? I don't know. What, what building is that? What building is that? Where you go oh, check out oh, books? No. The library. Oh, fuck you and your extra arm. <laughs> you fucking liar. All right, there it is. Oh, thank God. Steve Austin has the belt. Heyman has slipped it in. Oh. He swings. He misses. He runs him in. He rolls him up. One, two, three. No! We've got a new television no! champion, ladies and gentlemen. No! Two out of three falls. Steve Austin had the belt and said, oh, he nailed him in the head. He nailed him in the head. <laughs> oh, good God. What is he doing? Now he's smacking him with the belt. Oh. He's beating him like a government mule. Please go to black. Please get the show he over with. He nailed the referee. No! <laughs> Please get the show over with. I beg you. Okay. Whoa, here comes another referee. Oh, it's Groucho Marx's son. Oh. <laughs> no, it's Groucho Marx's son. Steve, or what's his name? Uh, Adkins or whatever he's saying. Fuck. Nobody gives a shit. <sighs> Barry Windham won the two out of three falls, but Steve Austin still leaving with the what? belt in hand. Of course, Paulie dangerously refusing to admit defeat. What an interesting turn of events. Of course, we've got a prop background here because that's not the way backstage really looked. No. And of course, Barry Windham selling his ass off. Groucho Marks, his son, checking on him. Ugh. He's been given two stun guns, hit in the face, hard as shit with the belt, and then whipped with the belt like a government mule. Your reaction, Tony Schiavone? Well, my reaction is that this was an hour and 20 minutes of bullshit. Is what this was. <laughs> and we still got two more minutes to go. Phew, that, looks, that looks like Barry after we've been drinking for a little bit, to be honest with you. Let's call the replay the re- here, Tony. Okay, here's the replay. Uh, Barry is going to uh, uh, get uh, stun gunned here. Uh, this is another camera angle shot. Paulie Danger says, get the belt. Uh, the referee goes tripping down. Paulie Uh-oh. says, whoop. Uh-oh. What's he Uh-oh. doing? What the fuck? After right? the match, Tony. Oh, okay. The wrong thing on okay. replay. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. Our replays weren't that good, but obviously <laughs> back then. <laughs> well, Randy Owen, the good guy didn't win. I mean, I guess he did, but my good guy is old Stone Cold Steve Austin. That's right, folks. The rattlesnake. He's going to get my ass a job for life. He ain't got stroke here yet, but as soon as I put that toga on, I'm getting his ass hired and he's going to take me to the rocket ship. That's right. Strap it into my ass. Yes. Let's take a look at these words. Woo! Oh. Scotty Flamingo here. One of these days I'm going to be called Raven, and I'm going to be doing some hardcore shit. What the fuck am I doing on this piece of shit show next week? They're going to put me on next week. They're going to talk for an hour before they get to me. And I'm the bad man. Long before I was Little Richard, I was a bad man. And I got a match next week on Saturday night. And remember, an hour to talk before they get to wrestling. All right, folks, we're here with Randy Owen, and don't you forget to go to that June Jam in Fort Payne, Alabama. What can they expect beside country music and hay? Tell us. Uh, well, I'll, uh, they can uh, bacon and grits and... And a guitar-shaped <laughs> pool. That's right. Real estate you'll never be able to sell. We appreciate you coming by. Thank Good you. luck. If you're going to play in Texas, you got to have a fiddle in the band. We'll be back next week, folks. We can't find a guest, so we got Fried Blind Pillman. We're going to ask him all about being a part of the Hot Tag Express and whether or not he had relations with Z-Man. Whether he was involved or not, find out next week right here on WCW Saturday Night. Uh, yeah, here's my favorite part of the whole deal. Yeah, mine too. They thanked, yeah, because it's over. Yeah. They thanked the provider of Medusa's wardrobe. Like, realistically, how much could that have cost? I know. It was, it's like, like $175 at the Cato? <laughs> what are we talking about? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I know. It's, it was the uh, Marshall's but special. But again, you know, not everybody has that SaveK.com money. Exactly. But they need it. Yeah. And, and then, you should save some money, get rid of your credit card debt, buy a house with no money yeah. down, remodel your kitchens and bathrooms, whatever you're looking for. We make life a little easier at SaveK.com. Minimal S number 65084, equal housing lender. Woo! And Tony, when I look at the clock, I can't help but think, I'm hey, hey, it's Conrad. You're at Tony Schiavone 24, and we are out of time. Is that my cue to do a close? Uh, this down, is, this, down, is, this is where you yell. Oh, that's right. right. That's you right yell and whatnot. Tony, All right. Here comes another girl. Here comes an Oriental. I mean, an Asian girl. <laughs>
Here comes a girl that looked like Beth Flair. Here comes Medusa. With a, with a wardrobe from Cato. Here comes Randy Owen. Here comes, my God, Dave Casper. Oh, my God, Bill Frelick is next. We're going to fuck up a promotion next week. WCW Saturday night as part of MLW Radio. What happened? <laughs> Can he finish? He finished. It's a part of MLW. Hey, no. He said, What happened? That's like, <laughs> check out WWF Monday night. <laughs> When? What happened? <laughs> We're out of time. On the MLW Radio Network. Oh, I need a drink.